Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever in the world you may be joining us from today. My name is Francesco Del Carpio, and I am the CFL York Operations Coordinator. I would like to officially open the second session of the Unboxing the SDGs for People, Planet, Prosperity, Peace, and Partnership speaker series, presented in partnership with the SDGs in the Classroom Community of Practice at York University. I would like to begin today's session with a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge and recognize that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territory upon which our campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. The area is known as Toronto and has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation and MAT communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and that the territory is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. As this is an online event and our participants may be joining from various locations, I strongly encourage you to learn about the traditional land upon which you are located. With this, I welcome our moderator, our speaker, and our participants from around the world. Welcome to our webinar. It is now my great pleasure to introduce our moderator, Matias de Dovitis. A strong advocate for public education, Matias has created and supported programs to help youth achieve better academic potential, including tutoring programs, bursaries, student placements, and leadership programs, and other initiatives that have helped thousands of students over the last 20 years. He was elected to the TDSB school board this last fall, the first Latinx to hold this position in 25 years. Matias currently works for City of Toronto Councillor at City Hall, Anthony Perusa, as Chief of Staff. He graduated from the University of Toronto with a double major in political science and Latin American studies and has a Master of Arts in political science from the University of Alberta. Matias, thank you very much for moderating today's session. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. And again, it's my uh, pleasure to be here and, and to introduce our, our uh, keynote speaker today. Um, uh, with that, I am going to uh, introduce Christian Van Vorsick. Uh, Christian joined the Gustafsson School of Business at the University of Victoria in 2014 and as associate teaching professor, teaches in all levels of business school from first to fourth year, as well as in the Sustainable Innovation MBA program. He teaches several courses in the area of marketing and management. Uh, he was the recipient of the uh, Gustafsson School of Business Excellence and Teaching Award in 2020 and the 2023 APR and EI5 Award of Excellence. Uh, Christian acts as the North American representative on a three-year project funded by the Lego Foundation as part of the United Nations uh, Supported Initiative, Principles of Responsible Management in Education. As part of this uh, pedagogy expert team, he collaborates with the global education community and developed a playbook of teaching materials and instructional strategies that will give educators effective ways to teach sustainable, responsible management to business students while incorporating the sustainable development uh, goals, SDGs, into curriculum in an engaging and meaningful way. Uh, with that, uh, uh, Christian, I wanted uh, uh, to uh, welcome Jan, and uh, uh, please uh, start your presentation. Thank you so very much, and welcome to everyone here. Thanks for joining this session today on a Monday. It's a, it might be a big ask for some of us, and, and we start off our week, so really appreciate any opportunity that I get to be with folks that see that this is an important thing to be talking about is the community of practice and as educators and what we do in our classroom. So allow me to just fire up the slides and start off uh, with a couple of intro uh, pieces here before we get into the depths of that presentation here in just a couple minutes. Uh, so uh, thank you for that land acknowledgement, Francesco, really important for us here uh, as well at the University of Victoria to acknowledge that you know we have this beautiful space my background shows what a beautiful space it is and how uh, we're really mindful of that. And we like to make sure our students as part of you know, sustainability understand the importance of recognizing diversity and in indigenous cultures and ways of knowing and being in conjunction with uh, you know, the, what we're trying to achieve with our sustainable development goals. Here's a look at what we're gonna cover in the next 40 minutes or so. And first of all, you know, how to incorporate sustainable development goals into our curriculum, but also within our own practice. So hoping you leave feeling somewhat inspired about how there's kind of infinite possibilities and in how we might be able to engage our students. If any of you are thinking about that a lot and, and what really triggers students to learn. And I want to do those with three major examples. The first one is going to be a, a 
an example of how we heavily embed the SDGs in a course. The whole course is framed around the SDGs. The second one will be more um, lightly introducing the SDGs into an existing course. So it's a nice contrast for many of you that might be something you see a little bit more applicable today or, or in the short term. And then the third example would be, it's basically how to teach or practices I picked up that evoke SDG kind of leadership without necessarily explicitly talking about the SDGs. So I feel like if we can do those three pieces, um, it helps us think about some connections that we're already doing, some things that we're already doing in our classroom. So that's a connection or extension. You'll see that a few times in the presentation, new things that I haven't thought of, but how do I carve that out as a way forward for me and my students? So it may apply to you, it may even be a challenge for you. So I encourage you as you see some of these and you'll have supporting materials following this presentation, you're welcome to use as a way to reflect on this in your way forward. That's what I'm hoping to accomplish here at nine o'clock in the morning on the West Coast and midday for you at Central Time, Eastern Time. May I just give you a, just a very quick where my mind is coming from? Since we're talking about framing our curriculum and our practice around the SDGs, uh, it's probably fair for me to say where my mind is in terms of uh, how I see SDGs fitting into curriculum. So what you're seeing here first is I come from industry and I still work in industry a lot as well as here at the university. So trying to create really practical examples, use a lot of projects. In fact, you'll see the first two examples today would be project based or these larger projects for students to work on. So trying to bring SDGs to life through projects going to talk a little bit here in a minute about the sustainability center that we have at the school. So me being involved in the sustainability center helps frame for me in my lived experiences how to bring that to life in a classroom. Uh, Mateus just mentioned a minute ago my work with the United Nations prime entity. So that also frames some of the background here. And I'll show you an example of that. And then um, as Francesco mentioned a little bit ago, I teach at all levels here at the university. So uh, that's important to note that everything from 100 to 400 in the undergrad, as well as the MBA and graduate students. So to that, I think what you'll be seeing here is I've got a practical lens on business. We have data that helps support what we're trying to do internally. The prime example is global collaborations that help fuel where I see us as a school and our students, but in a larger context. And then finally, because teaching all different types of student populations, hoping this will uh, connect with many of you, there's different, the diversity within the learning context, there's a space for SDGs in different ways. What you're looking at now, this, uh, when I talked about the, uh, we have a sustainability center lives inside, it's a small center that lives inside our small, I call it a boutique business school here at Gustafson School of Business. And I've taken a couple of screen grabs here from the website, don't expect you to read all of that, I've given you some links that you can take with you. But it is a center that's evolved around making sure that we have some guidance. So whether your schools have that or not, I might but maybe I'm just sharing with you that I feel grateful that we do have this support system in place where it lives inside the business school. I'm a fellow and many of our professors who are into sustainability are fellows that we share our practices and our research. So it's a melting pot, if you will, of things that are seem to be working or challenges in the classroom. We have an advisory board that is industry driven. I happen to be the one faculty representative that sits on that sustainability center advisory board. For the most part, we've got industry coming in, helping us carve out what do we want to look like? What does it mean to be facilitating great sustainable leaders and to meet those SDGs? So they really help inform us. And you'll see on the next slide, part of what we do at the center is continually collect data that would then inform us where we need to be focusing each year to improve on sustainable development goals in terms of curriculum, not just in one course, but across the business courses and across those different programs. BCom is different than MBA versus our Master of Global Business, et cetera. And then overall, I suppose we're lucky because this center allows us to communicate and kind of collaborate on a regular basis. Some of it's formal, some of it's informal, all in an effort to measure and monitoring. Many of you probably know that already. What gets measured gets done. So 
we like to feel like there is a sense of guidance there. Even though we have the autonomy within our profession to teach as we see fit, this is a guiding light. So I wanted to highlight that and happy to engage with people well beyond this workshop around setting up sustainability centers or, or learning more about that. Here is another screen grab from the website for um, CSSI. And I wanted to give you an example of the teaching side and how we incorporate SDGs. So this would be, as we're tracking data to say, our annual survey, or pardon me, it's not annual. After each semester, we have a survey that says, you know, what are you doing in your classrooms around SDGs and sustainability? And so it provides us with a lens of, you know, for the most part, much of our courses do contain that. And so it is allowing us to track that and even helps us think, okay, these right now seem to be the ones that are getting the most presence in a classroom. Maybe we want over the next two to five years to expand that and, and broaden the student's exposure to uh, the different SDGs. I just popped up on the screen. So the data and the research helps us do this. We have events and contests and competitions uh, showing you Aiden who just won our competition for a carbon offset pitch. So maybe shedding light on, while we tend to think SDGs will fit into the curriculum, that's a huge part of it, our center allows us to think more broadly. So whether you have a center or not, are there ways that we can engage students to think about SDGs and it's almost an extra curricular activity uh, to engage them and inspire them. So Aiden did a phenomenal job and I'll give you a link to his winning one minute and 20 second pitch on where we should spend our carbon offset uh, funds this year. Okay, as I said, here's the three examples as I start to go through those. And one of them, the first one's going to be deeply embedding SDGs, framing a course. Um, we're hosting a conference this weekend here at the university and we have a great example of a university that's just really taking various elements of their entire uh, faculty and incorporated so really, really deep. This one here is how I've just done it is one single course as I think that might be most relevant to many of us who are wanting to do that. The second example, once I go through that one, is an example of one I've been using for a while that for various reasons, so I explain it, it just kind of lightly touches on the SDGs uh, and it fits with the intended learning outcomes of a different kind of course, different kind of student. The first one's going to be a 400 level student group and the second one example is going to be uh, second, third, and fourth mixed. And then the third example is it's more about pedagogies and the way that we teach, the instructional strategies that we use that kind of encourages students to kind of be more responsible leaders, because that's really what it's going to take to act and address those SDGs moving forward when they're in their leadership roles um, post-graduation. So that's where I'm hoping to take us in the next little bit. You'll see this slide that I pulled from when I do a United Nations Prime workshop around some of the work we're doing with pedagogy. And it, it it's a slide that gets us as educators when we come together, as we're going through the material, you're making some connections with what you already do. Like, hey, that's really similar to what I do already. Maybe I'll just tweak it a little bit differently. Versus also, what extends your way of thinking? We sometimes, the longer we practice, I've been practicing for 10 years, I guess, the longer we practice, we can kind of get comfortable with certain things. So this might create some inspiration to do something quite different or a departure from what you normally do. So would encourage you as you're seeing this information for the first time, uh, by all means, and that might fuel some Q&A later on as we wrap up the speaking part of this. Let's have a look at this first example. I feel quite proud of this one. It's new and the course is brand new. So it's an example of Going deep with the SDGs, it is a project based. So I've told the students a big, huge chunk of your mark here is going to be this project in teams. And then what I'm hoping to do with this, as I run it for the first time, I want to transform the students. And as they're just about ready to graduate, I really want them to think about solution seeking as you move in trans transition from academia into the real world. There's other ways that we can uh, seek out some solutions. A lot of text on the screen and typically maybe more uh, more than I would typically have on a presentation, but I'm going to give you the full specs. It's about a five page document on this new uh, project. 
So the course is called COM 450 Sustainability and Marketing, brand new this year. And the students, as they get into their teams, are going to work on this project with me throughout the entire term. Note up here, it's a 40% grade. So that would be me really pushing it in terms of an undergraduate and how much of their grade is through teams. All of us in the room, we have our own comfort levels on you know, how much you want to weight a group grade. I feel like they're ready. Um, so in essence, they're using the whole basis is going to be using the SDGs. I'll show you on the next slide is specifically what I'm looking for. And there's going to be these two parts. They're going to go out and do some research and that research will inform them how to create solutions that are, you know, there's opportunities that haven't been tapped into yet. And then the other part of this will be a marketing communications piece, marketing course. And so I'm calling that environmental stewardship initiative in addition to some kind of digital asset that they can take and demonstrate that it makes sense. So on the next slide, this would be me taking more screenshots. Maybe this is like the page two of this document. And so it is about plastic pollution. There's lots of uh, newer research coming out to support that it's really bad. So it shouldn't be difficult for the students to engage in this. And it's asking them to come up, you know, do a lot of research, come up with some solutions, but really specifically, I want them to go broad and I want them to go deep on the, the following SDGs as a minimum. And that should, if you look at those, it should take us all, in, it should cover the E and the S and the G as part of the more broadly seeking out those SDGs. If you remember just a couple of slides ago, we've been really good, it sounds like, at just a couple of the, three of the SDGs were the main ones that we've been focusing on. It seems like across our faculty, I'd really like to start getting our students uh, looking more uh, across those different 17 goals as much as possible. The other thing I want to highlight on this um, is I'm getting them to think about a local solution, but it also attaches to a national and global reach. As business students, I really want to get them to think local has an impact on uh, you know what it is like for our nation and then what it how that might connect with the global impact. So uh, again, I'll give you the full specs of this just in case it uh, makes you think about that. Uh, a little more deeply. So that was part one, really. It's more of a written report. They've done lots of those. This is where it gets interesting for them. And I'm hoping if you're struggling with SDGs and how does it, how do they really buy into this or how is it meaningful to them? The half of the grade out of the 40% is going to be creating this digital asset. So in this course, I can justify that because marketing is about educating the marketplace about all the great things we're doing. And so it is the opportunity for them to document this, put it in some kind of asset that can be viewed. Um, and I'll, on the next slide, I'll talk about what the hope and the learning outcomes is from something like this. So if you're drafting up things like this as a project, it's helpful for me to say, what do I really want these students to feel and experience? And if it is transformation, what do I want that to look like at the end? Before I sat down, I took a few weeks to carve this out. So it's fairly robust. I also want to highlight for 40%, they've got to deliver a significant amount at the fourth year level. I uh, want to just jump in there. And in case any of you, when you hear about 40% teams or you like the idea of infusing more SDGs in a team-based project, there always is that fear. How do I make sure the teams have a decent experience? Or oh, I don't want a, a dysfunctional team dynamic to get in the way of the learning. This is something I tried this year where I get the teams to fill out, or pardon me, individuals to fill out yeah, their name and you know, tell me if there anybody you might like to work with, any other information you need me to know about what helps you work well in teams. And this here, if I could get a sense of which of these three seemed to be most interesting for you, it wasn't perfect, but it did help me group students together. And it's funny, this group, many of them, like the society and culture elements. So try it as one lens, if you will, group students together in terms of their interest and how they might gel and really dig into this project because they have similar kind of things that are important to them. So that so far at week five, it seems like the teams are functioning fairly well in this first go around. All right, so I said a minute ago, put this 
fairly hefty project together, but here's what I'm hoping I'm going to get out of that, or they will get out of that. I'm hoping there is some inspiration here. And I, we hear a lot about hope and uh, climate crisis and climate anxiety. And I, I know students are kind of worried, <laughs> worried about this. So maybe by the end of this, they are feeling quite inspired that they feel confident, or at least there's ways to seek solutions that haven't been discussed uh, previously in their stay here at UVic. And then I want them to become really, really aware of societal issues. Again, they link at the local and they can then li link to national and global opportunities. I know they've taken previous courses around sustainability and business, but I want them to leave seeing that there is a connectivity there that would provide greater impact. Uh, to the next bullet point here, I'm hoping they see that even though there's lots of solutions or lots of companies doing different things around plastic pollution and you know creating new products with recycled plastic, the, it's infinite really in terms of if you're being innovative, how they might solve other problems or look at gaps that haven't been solved. And in essence, that's what we're trying to do here, particularly in something like our innovation uh, program where students think differently. And then finally, I would love it. In a dream world, they're making connections about doing the right thing and making sure they understand, in, at least in a marketing context, educating society or your com consumers about all the great things that we can do together as a society for greater impact. And so here, you'll see this after each example, as you're going through this, maybe some connections, extensions, this may feed into our Q&A here in a little bit. You may do something very similar like this. You maybe hadn't thought of doing that. You may have questions around that. So. All right, I'm gonna transition from that deep, deep, I'm working with these students at least an hour per, per week on these. It's a, a class of about 30, uh, for students, so uh, really wanting to make sure I connect with them as much as possible in this project-based. The last little one you see down here, I'm going to talk about that in a little bit. This is that United Nations prime work I'm doing in an I-5, impactful five method of teaching, and that's, I'm hoping they're going to experience that the way that I've run that particular project, so I'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. Let's move into example two, because this fits for a lot of us, maybe, where I'm not going to make the entire course totally um, revolving around the SDGs, but it is more lightly integrated, particularly for this. Um, I think this contrasts nicely because this is a different type of course altogether. It's COM250. It's called Fundamentals of Marketing, and it is open to all of our second, third, and fourth year students. It's, a, it's an elective for many. It's part of our business minor program, and that's actually a very different kind of program and a different kind of population of students that are structured BCOM, in our MBA programs. They're coming from all different faculties with different frames of reference and, and thoughts. So I'm injecting a little bit of sustainability into what otherwise is this course that covers just about everything related to marketing. So really high diversity. So if that speaks to you, you want to introduce SDGs, but to do it too heavily too soon might be difficult. A couple of things I want to show you here. The other course, it was worth 40% this group grade. This one, I'm highly aware of, of, you know, not making it too high of a of a group grade. So 20% is the highest I've ever gone on this particular project to help them really understand SDGs. And it's like this 10% for a written report and then 10% for a, not a digital asset, a digital story. And I'm gonna bring the specs up on the screen in just a moment. One of the key things I found with this particular group, very diverse group, uh, very limited knowledge of business yet. They're just coming in. A lot of them, they're taking my course, the very first business course in the biz minor. So it was important here to give them agency around what it is, they, how they want to embark on sustainability. So you'll see in this um, abstract, they can either choose to be more entrepreneurial and develop some kind of project, uh, pardon me, product um, as their project, or some of the groups when they get together, that might be too much. So they would probably take a more consultative approach so they would, you know, take a fast fashion company and look at what they're doing and you know, analyze how they could make it better and more sustainable. So notice the difference here where the other one was, it's all about the SDGs. I've listed, you know, you got to go deep and broad on these things. This one is, you know, we've got a textbook 
and you go there first. And let's remember what we learned about sustainability as we start this course. And then also, also use this to build some of this, uh, the concept of SDGs into the um, project. And it is a project that I want to say rests in the background compared to COM 450, where I'm with them and we're just talking about this all the time. It's very iterative. This one, I introduce it maybe week four. It's not due until week 10. I'll check in a couple of times if they have questions, but it it's for the most part, it doesn't uh, reside inside the course the whole way through. And that's purposeful because I don't want to scare them off. I don't want to make this too much of their grade um, when they're just learning about the, uh, business. So. I'll give you the specifications of this again, just in case you've never thought about getting them to do something like a digital story where they can really bring things to life. I want to share with you an example. I won't play it for you because it's about five minutes. It's a bit too long for this webinar, but it is a grab some screen uh, shots from a student team submission. It's just a group of two gentlemen, um, Olivier and Patel, and they came up with this idea. So they took the product development and they dug deep. In fact, I don't give out too many A pluses on this one, but this was um, pretty much publishable. So they called it Smart Charge. And they identified that there's, you know, so much use of cell phones and battery life and batteries aren't, you know, lasting too long. So they came up with an idea to extend the life of batteries by creating this brick. So there's some technology and uh, that will attach to the battery and the phone. So it kind of looks like this. They gave me a nice, beautiful animated demonstration using artificial intelligence to kind of create this animation for me so I can understand that as well as it attaches to an in-home system. We're really great at kind of bringing the research and saying, look how much extension of life this will bring to the user's phone and how much less contamination in landfills as we, you know, throw away batteries and get new phones, etc. So it really, and then they bring in how this addresses two main SDGs, climate three under, uh, pardon me, climate action, which is SDG 13. And the one that is heavily thought about a lot in marketing is number 12, responsible consumption and production. So did a phenomenal job on that. And I'll give you a link to, um, to that because I want you to give you an example when I feel like if we can get the students really inspired about something they can dig into, I feel like that lasts well beyond the course. Um, and I'm also delighted that if they're using AI for other things, I'd love them to be able to use that in a healthy way. And if that means educating people in a really a dynamic way about our climate issues and things, I feel like that's beautiful. And I did have language about how they would use AI, generative AI appropriately. So that might come up as a question as well. Again, I'm like, I don't just throw these together like I'm sure you're aware of as uh, professional educators. I really wanna, I put some thought into what do I hope for these students as they finish this project, they might struggle a bit doing it, but when they leave my course, they eventually graduate, I want them to at least be introduced at the business minor or intro to business um, level, the sustainable development goals. Most of them want to ask, they don't know about them yet. And then I really want them to see that sustainability solutions are actually a little bit more challenging, a lot more challenging than just, we're here to make a lot of money. And as long as I understand revenue minus expenses equals profit, I feel like most of them realize that's an extra challenge and that's just the reality for them as future uh, workplace citizens to understand that we do have to think more about that journey. Similar to the other project, more lightly in injected into the course, but it's similar that I want them to identify opportunities to do the right thing. And there's that hope again. I really, I see these students struggling and you, you may see your students struggling with hope. So I feel like in some of the feedback, on the course of experience surveys are, this was a really energizing or inspiring project for us. So, you know, thank you, Christian, for getting us to do it, even though it was hard to do it. And uh, similar to the COM 450 project, they're making some connections. When companies do the right things and leaders do the right things, um, it's important to be able to communicate those. And that's what the digital story does. You're telling an audience or a target market, this is, this is a new product that's going to solve some problems. And then I've used the word stakeholders here. I want them to think about all the different people that are impacted by our business journey and then those that are we are impacted by. And again, 
uh, the similarly as I talk about the next example here, it's that United Nations Prime I-5 methods I've injected into the course that hopefully fires them up and makes them engage with the project rather than it just being something, you know, sometimes they just maybe tick the box and that's another thing that's done. And again, maybe that one, some connections, similar things that you're doing, you might wanna ask for Shara later or extensions, never thought about doing that with a very diverse group of students. Second, third and fourth year, for example, very different in their readiness and how, so a challenge is to bring them together. So there might be, that might be something you haven't thought to, I suppose, be brave on, or it is a bit of a risk at times. I'm gonna move on now to the first one was deeply embedded in the SDGs, project-based. Second one, light dusting of it, but I feel it's still somewhat transformational for the readiness of those students overall. This now is an example of, there isn't really any explicit SDG, we're gonna do this. You're gonna solve a problem that speaks to you know SDG four. It is more the way of designing and being more thoughtful about how to put instructional strategies in play in the classroom, or even before they hit the classroom, during the classroom, and then reflecting after the session. That is doing something, that sounds weird. It's creating a difference in how they interface with us. And so uh, this is that United Nations and PRIME stands for Principles for Responsible Management Education. So UN PRIME. And we're one of 800 schools around the planet <laughs> that are members of PRIME. And this particular project, um, I'm the North American rep, as Matthias said earlier in my intro, I represent North America. There's other reps around the, the globe that we came together and said, how do we develop a teaching framework that we end up calling the Impactful Five? So using pedagogies that kind of create differences in the way business students, I guess in particular, think and how they might transform as they move from academics into the workplace. So there's a playbook. Um, and I'll give you a link. This is the QR code to that playbook or resources around that. And lots of examples in there. What we do in the classroom that's speaking to this, and I'll give you an example of what I'm doing. So it just kind of changes the way they move through university rather than check that box that I just mentioned. It's like, oh, it's kind of important how we work together and how I think about not just me, but how I impact others. So the whole goal of this initiative funded by the Lego Foundation we're trying to facilitate more holistic skill sets in students. So they're tapping into the socio-emotional way of learning, not just the cognitive behavioral skill sets. And the connection is, and hopefully, if we're doing this in the classroom over and over again, and they just, it's almost like pulse, and they get very accustomed to just being better, maybe, citizens, that helps them become, in theory, responsible leaders as they move into management positions to leadership positions, and then they're better able to tackle those sustainable development goals because just like the two examples I gave you, all of those had stakeholders, all of those had impact, oh, pardon me. So what you're seeing here, I'm just gonna go through it. This would be the 90 minute workshop that I would put on to help people if they're being introduced to the teaching platform and how to maybe engage their students. This is the impactful five. And while you can you know, learn more about that in another session, this is what we're actually trying to accomplish. We're making learning meaningful for them and mindful of their well-being as students, creating some social context. That's the example here in just a moment that relates to the SDGs and trying to get them to actively be engaged. And then kind of like my big project, trying to get them to do it many, many times over the term and being more iterative in their learning journey. So it's a fairly robust system but the good news is we're doing a lot, a lot of those things in our classroom it's just maybe doing it with more intent so that our students walk away with this additional skill set and it isn't specifically saying you need to be better at SDG 12 and 13. So here is an example of and this would be for me presenting one of my examples in to the prime community but one of the things that we feel is so important based on the research is Developing students social, uh, social skills because they need to be supportive of their followers and in teams when that work. So this would be an example of how do we develop supportive social interaction in our classrooms. And this is called team charters 
for process. This would be in the playbook if you ever refer to that for more context. But here's just a screenshot. I get the students. They're going to be working in teams together. They just did this a couple of weeks back. And one of the first things, I'll give them some kind of fun forming activity. And then it's time for them to sit down. This is them on the lawn out here in a circle, <laughs> circle working on what's it going to look and feel like for us to work together over the next 12 weeks? Because they'll want to jump into, okay, we got to do the written report. We got to do the digital. And what platform are we going to use to, you know, create story? But I think most of us sort of these students are pretty accustomed to tasks. What we've seen them struggle with is process. Like, how do we treat each other with respect and making safe spaces for each other so that we feel like our diversity can flourish versus diversity is different. I don't like it. So for any of you in the in the room, and I feel like you've experienced when teams struggle, it often is struggling around not understanding each other. And so while I'm not saying you need to be better because it's related to the SDGs, I think in my experience, it's going to relate to all of these. In a broader sense, when students start to respect and work together better and appreciate diversity and understand that I impact you, you impact me, it actually, at the individual and little tiny team level, actually exemplifies what it's like when we are business leaders and we are out working, making decisions that impact communities and either help us thrive as institutions um, with our stakeholders or you know our ability to have great strong partnerships with others or not. And this isn't through one team charter. This is several things that I would do over a course of a semester that gets them to think and feel differently. And so here's what I hope to accomplish when we do things like team charters. I've actually changed this to a team commitment charter uh, for this term. But it gets them to explore things like, sure, sure, sure. Talk about you know what skills you need to do this project. That's the more the task stuff. But it gets them to investigate values, right? And I know my students, sometimes they eye roll when we start to go there with the values. That's why I'm not in the room when they're carving these out. But there's a space to really talk about what's important to me. And then can we agree on some shared values as we work together? What are the goals for working together? And so this template gets them to have easy conversations to start. But then as you progress through the template, then it's like, oh, we have to talk about rules of engagement. Like what, what are our social norms here? What do we need to make sure that we feel functional and supported with each other as we move through what's gonna start off as an easy part of the project and then phase two and three is gonna be like, you know, it's getting intense. And so managing norms, managing team conflict, which none of them seem to wanna to talk about, but what a platform that required to have these conversations that they probably wouldn't have otherwise. And then it even got them to sign this. So it feels like there's an accountability built in at the individual. I'm part of the team. And we've all come to agreement on this. So it creates some consensus within uh, the team there. And it's really interesting if any of you have used these types of things before, but you start to see leadership emerge in different ways within teams. And the confidence that can build when teams start to struggle and the ability to go back to something like a charter that provides a guideline a, a guiding light, if you will, that's right. We agreed upon these values. We agreed upon these processes that will guide us through getting the tasks done. I have them do that. And then at the end of the any of these team projects, they fill out a self and a peer evaluation that I feel like I've got enough data now to say overall, it's not perfect, but I get a sense of the charter piece enabled them, helped them feel a little bit more structured. There was less ambiguity in terms of process. They were already clear on what they had to do as tasks, but it really, I think, allowed for them to feel a little bit more confident there. And it's all about, I think, hope and inspiring students and making them feel a bit more confident. All right, mindful of the time. Just a couple of more comments from me, and then I will uh, check them for the time, see if we what might want to start here in a couple of minutes, any type of Q&A that might go on as we move through this. This one here is an additional example, because I've really been focusing on my undergraduate students and I teach in all levels. So our a master in business administration is specifically now a sustainable innovation MBA. So it's a bit of a departure from your typical MBA, although we cover basics. I teach marketing in a connected world instead of a marketing management course. 
And so this is an example of a student sounds like they uh, engaged from the first session that we were together because Kyle has felt inspired enough to go on LinkedIn and do additional research and reach out to his group, feeling like, you know, that was a fairly meaningful weekend we spent together. This is, by the way, a weekend MBA. So they meet with us one weekend a month over a two-year period. So adults um, pretty invested in their learning. But took it a little bit further. I love it that I see them reflecting on the time we spent in the classroom, built some meaningful I-5, impactful five kind of stuff. And that does, I think, prompt them to reflect on it. So went out, found this particular article and said this relates to what we were talking about in the classroom about, you know, entering conscious consumer markets and really thinking about that. So I love any signs of class dismissed, but they're still thinking about it. And it's such a pleasure. I'm so grateful what we have students that do seem to be motivated by those kinds of things. So maybe you have some of those stories to share as well. I'm big on some success stories at a time when, you know, there are days when we feel like, am I having an impact? Are my students engaging? I'm not getting a real good sense of whether I'm making a difference um, in their, their journey towards graduations. And yeah, I feel like that, since much of that course, Marketing Connected World, does speak about responsible and consumption and production, we tend to dance along in that SDG quite a bit in that particular course. And again, some connections with what you've heard this morning. You do some similar things or some extensions like that is so not something I would consider. Both of those, I think, are really valuable thoughts to be thinking, having uh, go through your mind right now, seeing this stuff, uh, or at least my stuff for the very first time there. So just as we're getting ready to me, me, me stop sharing the slides and, and answer any questions you might have, or it might even be comments. Here's where I think I, I spend so much of my time um, as I'm constantly trying to think, what are my students thinking? You know, where do we need to be in our classrooms between now and the next five years? Lots of stuff changing, lots of external things happening. Technology is impacting how students see the world and how do we play into that? So what is that? These are just a few ways I think we're having an impact injecting the SDGs into the curriculum in different ways, but also would love you to be thinking along those lines. Now in the next five years, lots is changing, lots is happening. And uh, I think more than 50% of my time is thinking about how I reach them versus the content itself. So maybe my last slide before I stop sharing your Matthias and we open it up, but I'll give you a copy of these slides and uh, these links will be in the slides, of course, plus uh, that Google Drive link is going to take you to any of my assignments that I've just provided to you in case you want them, for examples, um, a link to I-5 teaching framework, because there's, I want to say, 50 to 100 examples in there of different pedagogies or different ways that we engage students to make them maybe think more about being holistic leaders. And um, even some links there to our sustainability center. There's some sample lesson plans about maybe if you wanted to teach something around SDG 12, responsible consumption and production, we have sample lesson plans. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of, oh, don't know where to start, but maybe this is a this gives me some ideas. And always happy, you know, connect with me folks if you wish. More than happy to have conversations well beyond these webinars. I think that's where most of the magic seems to be happening these days is meet you here, and then the next thing you know, uh, we're meeting somewhere else. That's how I um, landed here right now with you. I met Tracy at another conference and, and like-minded folks do great things together. So with that, maybe that's enough talk, talk, talk from me, Matthias. And so um, at this point, if you have some questions or comments for me, I'm happy to spend some time here addressing any of those or attempting to, to address those the best that I can. So first of all, Christian, I want to thank you. At a personal level, as someone that uh, is in education and, and struggles with how it is that you reach uh, young people with material and, and things like that, I'm going to say that I, I really uh, appreciate uh, the emphasis that you have on the how and, and, and their approach, right? You can't just 
provide content that has to be absorbed and processed. And, and there's a whole science behind that. And I really appreciate the effort that you made here to share those things and also to share, right? Like, you know, the fact that you make all the information available. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions. I'm going to remind folks, if you want to ask a question, a couple of different ways of doing that, obviously the Q&A question, and we have a couple, we'll start with those. Uh, you can also put your questions in the chat. And we have a couple of those as well. And Christian, you do have a comment in there with some resources that someone wanted to share with you. So okay. just kind of point that out um, because you may otherwise not see it. Um, but uh, we're going to uh, start with a couple of the questions in the Q&A. First question comes from Ruth, and is, they say, for the digital storytelling in uh, your course, COM250, uh, did you uh, prescribe the platform software students used to tell the story, or did you leave it up to them to choose? Uh, great question, Ruth, and I'm always, since I'm big on choice, I'm big on making sure, and I've written this in the specifications that I suggest common ones that they can use, but also as long as it allows the digital story to do what it needs to do. And that is basically when I press play, it does, I don't have to do anything else. And so I might suggest you can use animated PowerPoint, you could use Prezi, um, but it's up to them. So I like to give them the choice. I feel like some of them are discovering some really great ones that I don't use that actually provide a better uh, digital story experience. So the funny thing is when you leave it up to them, I've learned a couple of new platforms that I didn't know about before. So, <laughs> and I thank them for that. So I feel like as long as we're clear on, here's some ones that you could use if you don't know what to use, but also um, there, you, you can choose one. And particularly for my real young students, I might say, if you're not sure, if this is an appropriate one, we can have a chat and you know just show it to me and, and we can make sure that that's going to support what you're trying to do here. So. Nice balance of choice. Thank you for that. Some suggestions. Yeah. Thanks, Ruth. Hey, thank you for that answer. And and uh, we have another question on the uh, Q&A section. It's a little longer. I'm going to read it out for folks. Uh, since SDGs are time-bound goals like NDGs, uh, what is the future of SDGs in curriculum after 2030? once we clearly get the results of indicators and targets for each country, uh, would SDGs become a history? Uh, just like we merely talk about NDGs after 2015. So they're time sensitive. What do you think happens after that? Where are we going from there? <laughs> oh, and I love this. I love this question because I feel like any day now, the students are going to be asking that question. We keep talking about 2030, and then they already know that we're not really good at some of our, well, Canada is not very good at many of those, meeting some of those targets. So what happens next? So that makes me think, A, I don't have an answer, but I think we need to start thinking about Maybe the term is how do we continue, how do we take that benchmark and it's continuously improving. Maybe I will talk about a, a platform that I'm working with specifically around sustainability and tourism that gets organizations to set a plan in motion. It's not bound to, it's framed around 2030, but every year the organization using this SDG fueled platform there's an expectation that you're better next year and you've improved upon things that you were working on, but you can better. So maybe I'm wondering that, is that where we need to start framing this? How do we put into motion a sustainability plans that show a continuous improvement? And maybe that's a really good project for students to start looking at those SDGs and saying, where, uh, what does that look like after 2030? Where are the gaps, for example, They've already no noted that Indigenous populations are not specifically explicitly built into that enough. So as a iteration, the 2.0 version of that, they may identify, for example, that we need to have another goal that speaks to that particular area within our sustainability plan. So I feel like I don't have anything specific, but this is an incredibly powerful question that that's going to come up. And we perhaps need to get them to be future forward thinking, which also makes me think about our Center for Sustainable, uh, Social and Sustainable Innovation. We've changed a lot of our wording now to regenerative piece. So it's regenerative education, regenerative business. So maybe that's it. Maybe it is that those goals provided us what we needed at the time as a benchmark. But then now we take it a step further. How do we, how do we regenerate some of those pieces that go well beyond and are almost hard to, uh, I don't want to say hard to measure, but 
really take us beyond that 2030 mark. Hmm. Christian, can I ask you a follow-up question there? Because you used the word uh, regenerative. Uh, what does it mean in this context? I can imagine what it does. I haven't heard it. Maybe you can expand on, on what that means. Oh, yeah, you bet. So, yeah, regenerative. And that's going to be part of our role, I think, that we communicate what regenerative means. So for us, it means, you know, being sustainable and not doing future harm. It's just not good enough anymore. And so our students are even seeing that. But, like, you know, you've handed us a real, I guess in their terms, a hot mess. And so the regeneration piece is, as we move forward, we've got to leave things better off than how we found it. And so that would be for us, um, and I'll, I'll talk about tourism for a minute because we're, and I work in practice around regenerative tourism using this platform that helps them measure their uh, sustainability plan. So if you're a destination and people are coming in and bringing tourism dollars in, how does some of that money feed back into the system that actually gives us better off, whether that would be Yet again, another tree planting thing. I think that's been done to death. But how does that money go into leaving the destination better than it was? So anything when we talk, for us anyway, when we talk about regeneration, the work that we're doing now reverses some of the stuff that's been done. So the future thinking is that we're better off. And then that leads us to indigenous ways of knowing and being where thinking seven generations ahead which is not typically what we do in business, where right, it's 90 days ahead that we're thinking of in terms of a growth, growth projection. So uh, for us, that's what regeneration means. Uh, status quo and, and you know recycling is just not good enough anymore. It's really got to have a plan to leave things better off. In five years from now, we want this campus to be even better um, use of resources than it was previously. Hey, thank you, Christian, for the, uh, the expansion on the term and. Love the term, and I start using it. I wasn't familiar with it. Um, you, you do have uh, uh, someone that was asking, I think you had mentioned it, and I'll pass this on to Francesco. Uh, how is it that people can get a hold of, of the presentation? Uh, I, I think that's uh, uh, something that uh, uh, maybe they uh, um, uh, uh, they can expand on when, once they pass it off to them. I, I do want to thank you. Um, uh, we were chatting before uh, the presentation uh, started. Uh, how beautiful Vancouver Island is and, and how much I enjoy being there. And, uh, you know, keeping in theme to what you were just talking about, we want to continue to have a beautiful Vancouver Island in the Northwest Pacific uh, that is natural and is sustainable for future generations. And, and uh, you know, congratulate you for the work you're doing and helping us teach a future generation how it is that we do that work is such an important thing. Um, I, so with that, um, I, I just I wanted to thank you for the work that you're doing and, and uh, on behalf of uh, CFL Unifor, I just uh, passed it back to uh, Francesco uh, uh, for him to help us wrap up and to tell us about the next uh, uh, the next sessions that are coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, yeah, I just want to first extend my thanks as well. Thank you so much, Christian, for that great presentation. Um, thank you, Matthias, as well, for moderating today's session. And of course, thank you to everyone who attended today. Um, we really appreciate people taking the time to be here and participate and um, ask questions and, and just talk in the chat. So it was great. Um, and thank you, of course, to our uh, organizing partners, the community of practice, the SDGs and the classroom community of practice here at York University um, for helping put together some of the speakers and helping organize the speaker series. Um, and so just as Matthias mentioned, um, so. I will be just quickly sharing my screen to show the next session. So this is a bi-weekly speaker series every two weeks. Um, every other Monday, we will have a session. Um, so session three will be coming up on Monday, June 10th, um, same time, 12 p.m. Eastern time, um, where our speaker, Dr. Kishanta Hunter um, from the University of British Columbia, will be speaking on advancing SDGs through transformative and justice-informed pedagogies. Um, so if that session is of interest to you or that topic is of interest to you, please mark that down on your calendar, share the session, share the series with your networks. Um, registration is always open and free. Um, and as always, you will be getting the reminders if you are already registered for the series. Um, so with that, just one last big thank you to everybody.
Um, and I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you so and much. May I just double check? Uh, I'm happy to put the link in there to all for Google Drive for all access to that stuff. Or if you would prefer to control that, that's uh, fine by me. But I, they're more than welcome to any of those materials. There's a link to a Google Drive where they can just access that. It should be set up as a shared folder. So, I'll sure. I think. Um, I mean, it's okay if you share it in the chat here. If you'd okay. like, you can send me the you can send me the link, and I can also share it with everyone who's attended. We get the attendance report. Um, I put it in the chat, but I'll also give it to you just in case people have missed that uh, opportunity. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, perfect. So then um, I'll just, oh, it is, let me see. Um, oh, I just see you've shared it with the host and panel. So are you able to share it with everyone? Thanks. Yes, and then, I of course, give me a moment. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> you already have it. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so just for everyone, um, if you'd also like to email me, if you don't have a chance to save the link right now, um, please send me an email. Uh, you'll find my email or I'll put my email contact here as well. We also find it on the CFAR York website. Um, so please send me an email and I'm happy to share the link with you all as well. Thanks so much everyone for coming. Appreciate it. Take care. Oh, link not accessible. I'll double check that. Okay, great. Thanks everyone. Take care.